Now that we've introduced the concept of a transfer function as a way of representing, mathematically representing a, uh, a circuit, we want to look at how we can use this transfer function to determine the sinusoidal steady state response to a sinusoidal input. So for a Vn equaling this, the corresponding uh, Laplace representation of it would be this. And we know that we can determine the Laplace uh, form of the output by taking the Laplace representation of the input and multiplying it by the transfer function. So in this instance, we have V out of S will be the Laplace transform of the input times the transfer function. To go back into the time domain, we would then need to take this expression, break it down into its partial fraction, and then transform those partial fractions back into the time domain. Now for this analysis, we're going to leave h of s unspecified. And so we'll just carry along the terms of h of s as such. Any poles associated with h of s would have a partial fraction term here also. But again, because we're leaving h of s unspecified, we won't, we'll just carry it along like that. Now, we need to determine the values, or to do this partial fraction expansion, we need to determine the value of k1. As you can see here, this s squared plus omega squared factor 2 s minus j omega times s plus j omega, giving us those two fraction terms. And now to evaluate k1, we multiply both sides of the equation by s plus j omega. When we do it over here, it gets distributed to each of these. S, oh, I'm sorry, multiply by s minus j omega. And over here, we're going to multiply by s minus j omega. It gets distributed to each one of these terms, s minus j omega. And it would also be multiplied or distributed to each of the terms from h of s. So we'd have an s minus j omega term here also. And then we would evaluate it at s equals positive j omega both sides here s at s equals positive j omega. Now here the s the s minus j omega terms cancel. The s minus j omega terms cancel there. It doesn't cancel here and it doesn't cancel there. So now we can go ahead and when we evaluate this at s equals plus j omega as we've seen many times these two terms are going to go to zero. But over here we're going to have, evaluating at s equals j omega, we'll have then v sub m times s, which is j omega cosine of phi minus omega sine of phi over s evaluated at j omega gives us j omega plus j omega, that's 2 j omega. And then we have that this term here multiplied by h of s evaluated at s equals j omega, or we'll write that as, as h of j omega. So that's simply taking the transfer function and evaluating it at s equals j omega. And of course on this side we're left simply with k1. Now over here we can do some simplification. We've got an omega term here, here, and here, so we can cancel those. And we also have a j term here, a j term there, which will cancel. When we bring this j term up into the numerator, it comes up as a negative j omega. So we'd have negative times a negative as a positive. And we're left then, bringing the 2 underneath the v sub m, we're left with v sub m over 2 times the cosine of phi plus j sine of phi times h evaluated at j omega. And that's our expression for k1. Now we use Euler's formula to combine these into its exponential term and rearranging it we have then k1 is equal to h evaluated at j omega times v sub m over 2 e to the j phi. So now that we have an expression for k1, let's just rewrite it here on this next page. k1 then is equal to h of j omega times v sub m over 2 
e to the j phi, where h of j omega is a complex expression which can be written as, we can write h of j omega in terms of its magnitude of h of j omega and an angle e to the j theta of omega. So what we're saying here is that when we evaluate h of j omega, we can calculate its magnitude, and we can also calculate its phase, and its phase term we're going to refer to as theta of omega, or in other words, theta of omega is the angle of h of j omega. So we can now say then that k1 is equal to v sub m over 2 times the magnitude of h of j omega times e to the j phi times e to the j theta of omega. Thus, the magnitude of k1 is going to be v sub m over 2 times the magnitude of h of j omega. And the angle of k1 and angle of k1 is equal to phi which again was the angle of the, or the phase term of the input, plus theta of omega, where theta of omega is the phase of the transfer function evaluated at j omega. Okay, now that we have an expression for k1, we can take this pair of terms, and from the Laplace transform tables, we know that this kind of a term right here goes to, in the time domain, 2 times the magnitude of k1 times the cosine of omega t plus the phase of k1. In other words, the phase of this term here is going to be the magnitude of k1, 2 times the magnitude of k1 times the cosine of omega t plus the phase of k1. Now we can plug in our k1, our magnitude of k1, and our phase of k1, and when we do that we get um, 2 times the magnitude of k1, which is v sub m over 2 times the magnitude of the transfer function, times the cosine of omega t plus the phase of k1, which is phi plus theta of omega. The v sub m's cancel, and we can now write v out of t is equal to v sub m, the amplitude of our input, times the magnitude of h of j omega, times the cosine of omega t plus phi plus theta of omega. Let's look closely at this and understand what's going on because this is a very important outcome. What this is telling us is that the output function, the result at the output of this circuit when this type of an input is applied, this type of input means that the magnitude of this cosine wave going in was v sub m, and it had a phase term phi. We can determine the output of this input to this circuit by simply taking the amplitude of the sine wave and multiplying it by the magnitude of the transfer function evaluated at omega. In other words, the magnitude of the output will equal the magnitude of the input times the magnitude of the transfer function. And the phase of this output term will equal the phase of the input term plus the phase of the transfer function evaluated at that value of omega. To put it one final way, the magnitude of the output is just the product of the magnitude of the input and the transfer function, and the phase of the output is equal to the phase of the input plus the phase of the transfer function. We're going to find this an incredibly useful result when we come to analyzing filters and other frequency-dependent circuits, and we'll use this
to see how different frequencies applied to a filter are affected um, differently and manifest themselves differently at the output. Let's look at this now in the time domain. We have here our V out is equal to V in times H. And we saw that there were poles due to the uh, input and there were poles due to the transfer function. We said that the tr poles due to the transfer function died out. We're seeing that here in the transient the blue here would be the term associated with the poles of the H of S. The green term is the sinusoidal steady state or the terms due to the poles of the input. And the um, red then is the total response which consists of the sum of the sinusoidal steady state or the steady state term plus the transient. And as the transient dies out the total response approaches then the sinus or the, the red the total response then approaches the sinusoidal steady state and after some finite length of time the sinusoidal steady state and the total response are the same thing thus we can use the transfer function to determine the sinusoidal steady state res response of a circuit